This episode has been brought to you by CompleteNutra.com, whole family nutrition. Welcome to the Healthy and Family Show. Each episode features interviews with doctors, experts, and real moms revealing their secrets on how to keep you and your whole family holistically healthy. Your host is David A. Stone, award-winning movie producer, Amazon best-selling author, certified moringa grower, and founder of CompleteNutra.com, whole family nutrition, which is committed to providing the highest quality, science-backed, non-GMO, all-natural nutritional supplements to keep your whole family healthy. Here's David. Hey, what's going on, everybody? My name is David A. Stone, and welcome to another exciting episode of the Healthy and Family Show. If you're watching this show, that means that you believe the health and wellness of your family should be top priority, but maybe you're a little bit confused with all the conflicting health advice out there. So our goal with this show is to introduce you to the doctors, experts, and real moms who have the secrets and tips that you can use to keep yourself and your whole family holistically healthy. Today, I'm really excited about our show because I'm getting some excellent cool guests from all over the place and all different uh, expertises in life. So today I'm interviewing Ginny Winton. She is a professional ballet dancer in Aspen. She's living almost a dream life, but here's the cool thing. The thing that we discuss in this episode is the dream that other, people's are, other people are living is not always what you expect it to be. And so I'm really excited so you can hear from a professional ballet dancer what that even looks like. What does that mean to be a professional ballet dancer? How does someone become a professional ballet dancer? And the thing we really get into is holistic health. How does actual dancing help your health and there's a lot of studies that are really beneficial in talking about how dancing helps us live longer and there's many reasons for this but I'm really excited to get into today's episode and before I do I want to talk a little bit about completenutra.com there is a product called complete joint health at completenutra.com this is a extremely proven product um, that helps everybody with their joints. It helps humans in general. And there's a lot of studies that have been done because the ingredients within here are why. Glucosamine and chondroitin are proven. They've been proven, proven in, uh, for many, many years and a lot of people take them to help their cartilage rebuild, help their joints feel better and feel a little bit more lubricated, but also build. Now here's the cool thing, this is complete joint health for many reasons, but one of the reasons is because we have some additional ingredients that not only lower your whole inflammation in your body, but also provide some additional antioxidants that can go throughout your bloodstream and fight free radicals better. So one of those ingredients is Boswellia extract. Boswellia is also known as frankincense. Awesome ingredient, very powerful anti-inflammatory. So that is one of the reasons that this is complete. Another reason is because we have turmeric and you know how amazing turmeric is. Four, four anti-inflammatories for our joints. Now this has some additional ingredients and I would also recommend having complete turmeric as well with the complete joint formula. I got it right back there. So if you add complete turmeric and complete joint formula, it's gonna do wonders for all of your body and help reduce inflammation everywhere. Go to completenutra.com, especially if you're active, if you're dancing a lot, if you're hiking a lot, if you're walking around a lot or running a lot or working out a lot, our bodies are meant to do this kind of work but we should be giving our bodies the building blocks that it needs so we can recharge, so we can rebuild, so we can keep doing this stuff so we don't get stopped. So these are building blocks for your joints and your joint health. So go to completenutra.com, load up your cart with all the incredible formulas we have on the site, including complete joint health and complete turmeric. And then at checkout, there's a discount box. And what I want you to do is enter Jenny20 to support our guest and support your health today, you're gonna get 20% off your entire order at completenutra.com just for entering code Jenny20 at checkout. So I hope you guys enjoy and really like this product when you try it. I do take it every single day and it makes me feel really good, especially because I've been walking a lot and my body needs some time and some building blocks to heal. So I take both turmeric and complete joint formula every single day. So thank you guys so much for watching this show and I'm really excited to introduce Jenny, the professional ballet dancer. 
you are a professional ballet dancer. So kind of talk about what you do professionally and then maybe how you how you became a professional dancer. Sure. Uh, so, yeah, I'm a um, full-time professional ballet dancer. Um, I currently dance for Aspen Santa Fe Ballet, which is a ballet company, a contemporary ballet company located in Aspen. And um, basically, like any full-time job, I work from about nine to five. And um, we do series of weeks of rehearsals where we put together works that um, are developed on us, um, dances, and um, we perform these dances in theaters all over the world, basically. So wow. we're kind of like a... Um, you know, touring concert company where we go from theater to theater and do shows for live audiences. How, how long have you been doing that? Uh, professionally for about 12 years. Wow. Um, but yeah, but I mean, in order to get to the level and the possibility to do this professionally, you have to train basically from when you're a really small child um, up through, you know, your whole youth to even have the opportunity and the option to go into this direction. Mm. Um, so I've been dancing and performing. I started dancing ballet when I was six. Um, wow. And I've been pretty much performing since I was six as well. My first, my first performance was in the Nutcracker with the San Francisco Ballet School, or the San Francisco Ballet, actually. They wow. would use kids from the school. So that was my first experience on stage. I fell in love with it. Uh, I was actually really bored with ballet itself. And it wasn't until I was brought onto the stage and experienced theater that I really mm. realized the potential of this, uh, this art. So, Coupling it with storytelling. Yeah. Dancing story with storytelling. Yeah. Yeah. So you like yeah. immediately like, yeah, that that's pretty rare. You immediately at six years old, like figured out what you wanted to do like that's kind of <laughs> I mean I would just I just was so attracted to it I didn't even really think that it was you know I wasn't thinking that uh -huh. I wanted to do this as my career I wasn't thinking about my career I was you just six, loved it but I just loved it like I just loved putting makeup on and going on stage and playing a part and like you know the ballet thing was just kind of the afterthought I just love performing so much <laughs> So that was the thing that just like centered me in that. So I just, you know, worked super hard and, and eventually like by the age of 12, I started loving the actual dancing of it. Um, and that opened a whole new door for me because mm. it was just, it's just, it teaches you so much discipline and so much like articulation with your body. It's like, oh, I can't imagine my life without it. Like, I feel like I would be a completely different person. Mm. So, so I, I guess let's talk to some, let's talk to the kids real quick. Like when you were young, did you have opposition or did you have like, were, were, did you have a lot of support to do this or was there like things you had to push through? I mean, I was really lucky because my parents were super supportive. Um, you know, they're the ones who put me in it and, and they definitely encouraged me to go forward with it. Um, you know, it's, it is hard because you do have to sacrifice, um, mm. some aspects of being a normal kid because, you know, you can't just go over to your friend's house after school. You have training and, um, and I ended up, you know, um, actually for high school doing like a kind of independent kind of high school. It was um, mm. I went to the actual school a couple times a week, but most of my work was done, um, you know, on my own. So I didn't get that that normal high school experience that most kids get. Like I didn't get a prom, you know, oh, wow. that kind of yeah. stuff. So it's kind of like so young actors that, that start when they're kids or, or really yeah, any or sports athletes. Or athlete. any, yeah. yeah, you're right. It's true. So there is sacrifice involved. So, you know, mm. you got to know that going into it. If you want to do it, 
you know, for real, it's, I mean, it's perfectly fine if you want to do it, you know, just for fun a couple times a week, but like in order to do it professionally, you got to put in a lot more hours than that. Right. So. It's like the 10,000 hour rule, but you know, if you start yeah. at six years old, you can get 10,000 hours in really early. Pretty early. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's true. It's true. Huh, um, that's amazing. So, you know, the one thing I'm, I'm realizing about dance and I don't, I like to move my body. I don't know how to do any kind of move type things, but like choreograph stuff. But I, I have been researching the health benefits of dancing because, mm -hmm. and they're like numerous because when we're dancing, you know, we're moving our bodies, getting our joints going. And uh, what are some of the biggest like health benefits that you know, notice from dancing? Well, to me, I mean, I feel like dancing is the only thing that really integrates um like intellect it's very intellectual because you're not just working out in a gym you're not just like pumping iron or running on a treadmill like you're using your brain to put combinations together to activate certain muscles to be coordinated with the musicality of of the steps so it's like so many things are happening at once and I feel like you can't get that through any other form of exercise, mm. you know, um, it's, it's just all encompassing and like, it does put you in that kind of like that focused, like Zen place when you're, it's, it can be meditative for a lot of people. Um, and not in the, like, I'm falling asleep meditative way, but like the, like super, super engaged meditative way. Like the zone. The zone. Yeah. For yeah. Sure. So that's wow, how really, like, cool. very addicting. And I think that's what gets a lot of people as well. Yeah, I could see that. There's so many elements all coming together, especially when you're doing it in a professional level. I mean, you you have to practice. I mean, how, how often like what's your uh, during when you're performing and when you're you're in your zone? What is your daily routine look like? How do you practice? Uh, well, it depends on if, if we're in a performance week, um, we usually will start, we always start class, um, before rehearsal. So we do an hour and a half of basically, um, technique class. And if we're in a performance week, we will start that later because we have a really long day ahead of us, obviously, cause we're, we're performing, um, and we'll be dancing late. So we'll start that class around 11, 1130. Um, we do ballet class for an hour and a half. Um, and that consists of bar and center. So we do exercises at the bar, then we move into center, um, and dance in the center of the space. Uh, and then we usually will do a tech rehearsal. So that's a rehearsal with all the lights and, um, all the, you know, our team, we have a tech team who, you know, does the you know, lifts the curtain up, brings it down, gets the music involved and, um, does all the light stuff. That's a full um, run through your tech. It's a full, yeah, yeah. It's usually, we usually space it first so that we're not full blown dancing in a space that we haven't like kind of like, you know, worked out yet. Mm. Um, so we'll space the whole thing and, um, you know, if it's a performance, if it's a show we've done a million times, we're not even really required to run through it full. Like we'll just, they call it Italian style. It's like when we just run through the show without actually doing it. Like a quick block, um, blocking. Yeah, and quick blocking running. and then like just running through. But if it's something like that, you know, we haven't done a lot or if it's a theater that we've, you know, we're not familiar with, we'll usually do a full run through before the show in the evening. How long are so your shows? I, shows are usually like two hours, oh, around wow. two hours. Yeah. And it's, it's, wow. you know, we're a company of 11 dancers, so pretty much everyone's involved most of the time. Um, we're pretty much in every show and every piece. Maybe we, one or two of us will get a piece off a specific evening, but we're pretty much dancing the entire time. Do you have different, do you have like one role that you or Do you play multiple roles? Because there's oh so no, we people. we we play everything. So oh. it's like since um since there's eleven of us, we usually do about three pieces per evening, um, unless it's a full length ballet, and then we just do that full length. 
Um, but each piece um, can require from two people to like eight people in it. So we have to cover each other as well as our own pieces because if someone gets sick or injured, like we have to, you know, have each other on rotation. Um, but yeah, we, we pretty much like, we're pretty much able to go into anybody else's spot of short notice just because we got to cover our bases there. But we do do different parts. We do do different parts. Yeah, it's like sometimes people don't understand the, the, they see the final product of it and they it, it seems real, probably really glamorous, that final product. It's kind of like yeah. the end result of a movie. And people are like, I want to do that. And then it's like, but do you? Because like yeah. the day <laughs> the day that you're you're talking about here, you got an hour and a half practice first. Then you do a mm -hmm. full run through before the show. The, I mean, mm -hmm. what else are you doing that day? Um, taking a nap and eating. <laughs> and then you do the show. So you basically do the, do the show twice kind of that day almost. Sometimes it's a yeah. quick run through. But. Uh, it's very often that like we feel like we're doing a show, two shows because, yeah, theater days are very intense days. But how often are those days? Once a week? You know, like um, we usually we have like seasons because, um, mm. well, we're since we're based in Aspen, there's on season and off season. So on season is summertime and winter time and off season is fall and spring. So mm. we will have um, maybe like a weekend of shows in the summer in Aspen. And then our our residency, our dual res residency is in Santa Fe. So maybe the next weekend we'll go to Santa Fe and do that same cluster, like one weekend of shows. Um, and then in the fall and spring, we're touring a lot. So we'll, you know, fly to LA and um, do a weekend of shows there. And then maybe do like, you know, go to Orange County and like do some shows there. Um, and we do international shows too. So during those off seasons, we, you know, we've gone to be a France and Israel. Wow. Um, we were cool. supposed to go to Germany. We were supposed to go to Germany about a month ago, but you know, can't do that. Oh yeah. So <laughs> that interrupted everything. Boy. It did. Yeah. That actually has, you know, the, the dance community has really, really suffered and, and we're, you know, still trying to figure out how to maintain our, our technique and our strength when we have to, be dancing in our living rooms right now, you know? Mm. So, and, and we there's so much know, of an interaction. I imagine that you kind of can't dance yeah. with others right now. Well, that's the really tricky part. You know, my, my company's trying to figure out how, and every dance company right now is trying to figure out how to, um, navigate this new life that we live, you know, um, we, you know, we take class together We're we're doing, yeah, we're basically touching each other and dancing on each other and breathing and sweating on each other all day. So we just, you know, we can't work right now. Like, it's just not, it's right. not possible. Well, right. Sure. So social distance, um, a salsa. No, <laughs> no, I, I know. I, I know like certain, certain areas of, of the world and of this country, they're starting to bring, you know, I think students back in very small groups and like they have tape on the floor and they can only dance within the, the confines of the tape. And like, it's just very strange. And, <laughs> yeah. That, um, that feels so weird. It's like, yeah. Dirty dancing. So, like, well, yeah, don't touch anybody I, here. <laughs> yeah. It's it's crazy. And, um, so right now mainly there, it, there's a lot of virtual training going on. Like, um, I, I teach some virtual like zoom classes to the kids in Aspen Santa Fe Valley school. And, cool. um, yeah, so, um, it's a, it is a lot, it's, it's very different, but we're doing what we can to kind of keep going and, mm. you know, cause we can't just, you know, the world can't exist without art and without, You're without right. it would be so boring if there was terrible. no dance or art. Yeah. You know, artists, I feel right now on a lot of levels are kind of getting feeling like they're getting hit. But but I, I dancers, I can totally see what you're saying, especially it's pro, it's a very different situation. Other artists are more a, yeah. a lot of solo 
solo artists right now could probably really thrive with this extra kind of time and slowing down of things. But, but when you have a social art, I, I mean, I didn't, I guess I didn't even really think about it like that. It, it definitely disrupts it big time. Wow. Yeah. I mean, the biggest thing is like, you know, even if we're allowed to be in the same room together and, you know, maybe do, do duets instead of big ballets, um, we still have to think about like, is the audience going to be there? You know, are people going to come to the shows because, you know, they have to all sit in yeah. the same room together and like all the cha- the seats are right next to each other. And, you know, our, our, the whole situation wouldn't allow that, you know, at this moment. So we have to, you know, kind of think about that and see how we can kind of change the, the way that we normally perform um, and have people view us. So yeah, you know, churches tricky. went through that right now because everybody go, like goes to church. It's like so yeah. a, a lot of churches had to like immediately really quickly switch to like live streaming weekly. So maybe right. these dance uh, studios can, you know, eventually we could kind of get it to like, hey, there's the, the your dance channel, like the live stream yeah. of, of your shows. Uh, and it's maybe it can also come into into. Oh, yeah, because the audience It's hard because it's, the you know, it's there's something about live art oh, you're that's so just right. you can't just reproduce. And um, it is it's 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 like the one thing that that makes what we do so special is that it's happening right in front of your eyes. And like, you know, obviously right now we're just going to have to adapt, but at the same time, we are like, you know what, we're not ready to give up live art. Like we have to, it has to happen at some point. So we're just kind of like, well, yeah. Well, yeah. We're not losing dance. Like right. humanity <laughs> can't lose dance. <laughs> yeah. No, it's, it's something that is necessary for a lot of people. And, you know, um, hopefully with the virtual, you know, broadcasting of, of dance, people who haven't been exposed to it yet, uh, like who hadn't, you know, seen live dance will be exposed in a way. And like when everything does open up, they'll be inspired to go see a live show. Mm -hmm. So that I think everybody, I think it's, of things. you know, dancing is kind of becoming very like 15 second, like these things with, uh, on, yeah. on, t- was it TikTok or whatever? It's like, yeah, dude. very commercial, <laughs> very like, yeah. And I mean, that's like a, a whole different, you know, there's commercial dancing and like, that's what people are used to. I think is the dancing scene on TV <laughs> right. and, uh, that has its own like great, you know, aspects to it. Um, but yeah, the you know the classical dance, the um, the there's ballet, so the contemporary much ballet. There's like there's a lot talent, and and you can really tell. It's like and, and so ballet is specific to classical music, right? Is that right, or is that not right? No, not necessarily. Look into any ballet class that's online or whatever. It always has a piano accompaniment of you know classical classical melodies and you know, very, um, yeah, very balladic classical music. Um, but you know, I mean, the company I work for now is we're, we're classically based, but it's a contemporary company. So we do a lot of like really interesting works and, you know, the music can be like, it can range from like rap music to, you know, any kind of electronic music. Oh, cool. um, That's pretty sweet. Yeah. So, yeah. So it's, it's like, you know, it is moving with the times and, um, because it's the show. Ballet because it's will a play. Always, yeah. I mean, it depends. Sometimes it's really abstract and there's no actual like visible story unless, mm. you know, it's like concepts. It's, it's like modern art. Um, but there's, there is always like a through line. There's always an idea and there's, there's usually you know, some pretty good room for interpretation. So that's what keeps it fun. Wow. How cool right now. I mean, it's like, how, what are you doing during this time of a break to kind of stay in gear and and stay, are you working out right now? And what's your regimen look like? Yeah. Well, I mean, I have to tell you, it's been like the hardest kind of transition because, um, you know, we, we had to obviously stop working at the studio and, and we didn't really know 
how long we were going to be away for. So usually when I have a break, like we'll have, we'll have like, we usually have about two months off a year, you know, broken up. So I'll take like, you know, three weeks off, get my body, you know, back together. Um, cause you have to give it a break when you're working yeah, so bet. super hard. Yeah. Um, but you know, not knowing like how long you're going to have to be training this way, it was really hard to gauge. Um, so, you know, I took a little bit of time off in the beginning. I was dealing with this like foot thing. So I, you know, rested that and, but you know, you know, days and then weeks go by and you're like, I really got to get back into things because my body is just like, feels weird. Like it just doesn't, it just doesn't feel good when you're, when you're out of shape and you're missing that routine. So, um, but you it know, happens got, fairly quickly if, oh, you, yeah, if, if you're working fast. out, if you're normally in, in a schedule where you're like training every day almost. Yeah. No, it, it's like I've had to become very creative. Um, so, you know, classes started being offering being offered online virtually um, with dance teachers from all over. So that was kind of cool that I got to tap into classes um, with people that I would normally not get to, um, you know, learn from is pretty cool. Um, the challenges are obviously the floor surfaces that, um, you're dancing on because, uh, you know, we basically are like, like our feet are like a dog's nose. Like, it's just like everything we can like, like feel every little different movement. And, um, you know, if, if the surface is like too slippery, too sticky, uh, uneven, if it's too hard, wow. if it's too soft, like it's just, it just throws everything off. So, um, you know, I've been trying, you know, okay, well maybe today I'm going to see how the outdoor patio is in terms of my tondus and plies or the bathroom, because the bathroom is a little more like smooth, Um, or, you know, I'm going to put a yoga mat in the, in the living room or the kitchen could give me a little bit more of like a a comfort, like a little more bounce. Cause we're actually, you know, never think about that. The studios are built for, for, for you. The studios are built. They're like, the floors are actually sprung. Hmm. So, uh, you, you mostly, most of the time. Um, so it's like a layer of this feels pretty, I mean, it's like, yeah, it feels pretty great, but we are like doing crazy jumps off of it. That's so. the other thing because it's probably <laughs> to help you have more shocks because like if you're yeah. really being uh, doing these probably intense moves, your body would probably get injured quicker if you didn't have that kind of a floor all the time. Right. And which is why like in the beginning of this, I really kind of like I wasn't doing as much ballet and I was doing – um like yoga. I was, um, you know, doing, I'm a certified Pilates instructor. So I was doing a lot of Pilates. Um, I got really into road biking. Um, so I was doing other things cause I knew like if I was pounding my body every single day on these surfaces, like I was going to get hurt. Mm. So, um, so I, I mean, eventually I kind of was like, well, I really do need to get back into like a consistent class. So I've just been, you know, you know, creative with that. And, you know, I'll jump in my tennis shoes instead of jumping in a ballet shoe just to give myself a little more cushion. Um, and it actually does teach you to work a lot smarter instead of harder. Mm. Um, so you're really like, you're like, okay, well the surface and the space isn't ideal. So that means I'm going to like really work on my port bra or I'm going to really work on my plie and my landing versus my actual jump. So it is like, you know, it's challenging and and helpful in that way that it makes you it makes you work in a different way. Yeah, that's actually a really good point. Like you're able to to focus on something and just dial that in. I remember it was Bruce Lee said that he would take one of his like karate moves or whatever he did. And he but he would do it super slow mo for like probably thousands of times. I don't remember the exact number, but just a stupid amount of times until then he would start speeding it up. And then when he got to that full speed, it was like lightning, but he was doing the entire move. Um, but yeah. you know, you got to start with a lot of this repetition. So it might be helpful to kind of almost shake up the routine if you can adapt and then start focusing on all those little things to really maybe dial in some of those. And totally. It's, it's been a great opportunity to like go back to the basics mm. with, with Definitely. everything to just, you know, like, 
be a minimalist, but like you're a clean, obviously when you're a middle minimalist, things are like better organized and <laughs> yeah. cleaner. So it's like, it's like making your body more organized and cleaner. <laughs> yeah. Like getting rid of all the junk and focusing yeah, on the things the that matter. Yeah. Necessary things. Yeah. So. Complete neutral.com. Hi, Dr. Jesse Keener here. We're going to talk about a formula that I have a real special affinity for. It's called Complete Joint Health. Now, if you're young, 20, 25, you're probably not worried about your joints yet. But if you're a mom and a dad, you're already worrying about your joints because you've noticed from picking up toddlers over and over that your back, your neck, your knee, your shoulder. If you're a former athlete or a current athlete, you are definitely concerned about your joints. There is nothing worse than a joint problem taking you out of your game or taking out of the rhythm of your daily exercise. We all know how important exercise is for overall health. And if you're gimped up, you're out, you're lame, you can't do it, you're gonna see your body breaking down pretty quickly from the lack of exercise. This product has natural anti-inflammatories in it in case you already have the injury, like Boswellia and Bromolane, which are natural inflammatories, safe, 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 even in higher doses. It has MSM, which is sort of the king of joint foods. It also has glucosamine uh, conjointin, which is also a joint enhancer. So you can actually rebuild joints. You can take inflammation out of joints. You can support the healing of an injured joint and surrounding tissue with this product, Complete Joint. I recommend it heartily because you want to stay active to the very end of your life. Moms, dads, grandmoms, granddads, you need this product. Yeah, I think so this whole thing good. was a big pattern interrupt, and I think we can look at it in a lot of different ways. But it, sometimes it's good to shake things up a little bit because I think a lot of us were in these repetitive patterns that were just like, even when we're doing something that we love, and, and I don't know, maybe you could speak on this, but when you're in your zone, you're doing something you love, sometimes it can actually still turn into like, mm, mm, and you got to kind of like figure out a way to, to shake it up. Do you ever experience that? Oh, for sure. I mean, I feel like um, a really important thing to humans is is to actually be learning new skills all the time. So if you if you get too much in a routine, like you can actually turn your brain off and not even realize that you're doing it. You know, it's just like you get into this like mindless practice and like mm. it's it's, you know, yeah, it's it's not always good. <laughs> I can see yeah, so, for sure. So, I mean, this was definitely um, an opportunity to, like, switch things off and to maybe focus on parts of my life that I don't usually get to. Um, That's true, know. too, because you're, you, I uh -huh. mean, you're a professional dancer. You're, you're working a lot. Your work is what you're passionate about. But, I mean, it's like if I go shoot a movie in another country, it's not like I'm going out there on vacation. Like, I'm working every day and, you know, right. it, you know but... Um, it's a, it's a pretty exciting life, but there are probably certain things that kind of get kind of deprioritized that right now you can maybe bring up into priority. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's super true. Like we're in the studio all day. Um, so I'm like never at my computer now. I spend a lot of time at my computer and I, I was really, you know, shy about technology because I just didn't really spend too much time with it. And like, I'm, I'm kind of learning that there's, there's all these things that you can do like through Photoshop and like just oh, yeah. <laughs> websites and stuff like that. So that's been kind of fun to play with cool. and like kind of, you know, develop my, um, myself that way. Um, and you know, just, yeah, like there's, you know, all these other activities that you can do to keep your body strong that I, you know, wasn't doing because I was in the studio all day. Um, like biking is really fun. I realized I just got really into the road biking, got like all the little, all the gear and like, just, awesome. you know, it's, it's a way for me to, an excuse for me to get outside without, you know, breaking the rules. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, and you can go fast, you can get some some speed under there, you know, and like, yeah, I get the, get the cardio. It's really the only thing that gets me cardio these mm. days. So, um, and then, you know, baking, everyone's baking bread. Um, <laughs> my boyfriend and I love to bake sourdough bread. So awesome. that's also what we've been doing. And, and, um, it's super fun just to have, just to add these little routines in 
that are kind of new. It's like you develop a new routine and then you add it in and like you do it for a little while until you get bored and then you switch it up and change it, do something else. <laughs> yeah, I love I think that's kind of the artist life. Uh, I, I, I kind of live that way a little bit. Um, I'm pretty much mostly, <laughs> but, yeah. but not, not dancing. I mean, you know, the, that's the cool thing. The one thing about dancing though, no, you're doing it professionally, but the one thing about dance is uh-huh. pretty much everybody can do it. Like, yeah, we can all dance and we all should right. <laughs> dance when it's appropriate, which is yes. most of the time dancing makes right. every situation <laughs> better. I can't think of an inappropriate time to dance. Maybe there's like one or two, but like. Well, the inappropriate that, times to dance are the, probably the best times to dance. Pro- yeah, you're actually probably right. <laughs> you're not supposed the to dance, dance here, sir. What? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. I don't know. I, I can't think of one. I yeah. really can't. Yeah. Um, it's but always, yeah, dancing all, is just yeah. like, I feel like it's such a natural thing and it's such a cultural thing. Like there's Mm. every culture has their own kind of dancing. And, um, yeah. When you get into it, you're right. It's like when you really get into each cultural dance now, how many, do you know a whole bunch of different kinds of dances? Um, like different, um, cultural dances. I I guess, I guess I don't know what I'm saying. Styles of dancing. They're like, there's, I mean, ballet is one style and I guess modern or contemporary ballet is probably another style also. Yeah. I mean, uh, well, I, you know, from when I was little, it was like ballet was everything. Um, but then as I got older, I started doing more contemporary work. Um, I actually halfway through my career, I, I was offered the, the role of Penny on the national tour of dirty dancing. So I, I, yeah, I transitioned from like strict classical ballet to like salsa and like Latin dance. And that was so fun. Like it was just a whole new, yeah, it was like a whole new world just just, like opened up and like, you know, just like using, you know, uh, Latin dance is like all about, um, a specific rhythm and like using your hips. And it was, it was like, it was, it was a whole new vocabulary for me. And, um, I think integrating the, you know, strict ballet training with the more loose, like Latin movement, maybe kind of like a pretty, pretty good contemporary mover. Um, so, uh, I think it was actually like really one of the best things for me was to like get out of my comfort zone and do something completely different. Um, awesome. Like leveled you up. Oh yeah. It just like, it, yeah, it changes everything. Did you find it was a little, did you find it was like almost kind of intuitive to learn a new style after you already do ballet? Uh, I mean, ballet is really hard. So I feel like after you do ballet, it's like everything else is a little easier. Yeah. Right. Um, I, you know, I guess the hardest part about it for me was letting go of my ballet technique not completely, mm. but like just, you know, you you have to release the tension that you build a lot in in classical dance, like, you know, the footwork and the placement of the hips and, you know, the stacking of, of the body in order to get grounded and get looser in the Latin movement. So I feel like, you know, letting go of some of mm. what was correct in ballet um, was super, super challenging, but also, you know, rewarding and, um, really fun. It's like, you so. can break the, you can break the rules when you learn the rules. Once you learn the rules, yeah. you can learn yeah, how to that's break actually them. A very good way to put it. Like, yeah, you learn the rules, you like make them, you know, so, so refined and so concrete. You understand the rules so well that like, now it's time to break the rules. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> That's <Yeah>. awesome. <laughs> and, the, you know, the other cool thing you mentioned before was uh, the mental game of it. And actually, there are studies. I have i don't know where the studies are, but I, I know if you, we Googled it, we'd find them, of the mental cognitive benefit of dancing. Like, uh, they even say it's good for Alzheimer's patients and people with that are starting to kind of experience any brain, uh, uh, like, neurological disorder because – dancing yeah. incorporates every muscle that you even forgot you had type thing. And, and, you know, then it, maybe it even brings up memories and the music can. So anyways, but the whole like Corey, like learning actual dances does mm-hmm. stimulate our brain. 
Oh yeah, for sure. And I can tell the difference. Like if I hadn't, if I haven't, you know, done a new work in a while, like my brain isn't as, as on it, you know, versus like when I've just been working with a new choreographer or, you know, learning, learning dances, we learn dances off of videos a lot because, you know, often, often there's not the opportunity to work with the actual person. You have to take what was done and, and learn it that way. Um, and, you know, obviously learning off of video is a, it, it is a different technique because since it's a camera, you kind of have to flip the image in your mind to get like, like the right and the left correct, you know, cause you see the video and the left side of the screen is actually the right side of your body. So it's mm, this like, yeah, right. You got to flip it. Like you, you gotta know, learn you have how to flip, flip it. it. So it's like, it's <laughs> dual. It's, it's like extra tricky if you're, if you're not used to that. Um, but yeah, there's a definite, like, I feel like it's like 90% mental ballet is like 90% mental. <laughs> wow. It's, 90. It's, yeah. I feel like it's 90. Yeah. I could, I mean, <laughs> It's got to be a mental game. If you're saying that, you're a professional, so I can I can only imagine. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's you know, I, you know, through in terms of longevity of like what I've had to done to apply myself, I feel like it's more mental than physical. It's because you know you can you can get yourself physically to a point with just like your mental your mental dexterity. Like it's just. It's so, it's so important to be like, to be, to have will and, and to be intelligent and, and to be just, you know, you know, very, very detail oriented. And able all to very adapt. Important. Yes. Very and adaptable. able to adapt is very important. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. I feel like that's just the most important skill in life in general is just no matter what you're doing, just know how to adapt and, and you'll be okay. <laughs> yeah, I think I agree. I think that's that if we can learn to adapt better, we can actually almost have a superpower because we can handle right. really any situation, any situation that we're in. Right. And I think that's you've true. been trained as an athlete. So you've been trained to, to really like deliver, like always mm -hmm. be I don't know, perfect maybe, you know, so it's like, uh, is well, there a mental, yeah. is there like, do you ever struggle with self-talk? I mean, how does your mental oh, game? Oh, for sure. Work? Um, I feel like that is, that is a, um, slippery slope and, and, a really something that ballerinas especially like struggle with is mm -hmm. that, you know, I can see that. achieving perfection. Um, because first of all, I mean, it's, it's a super hard, hard skill to develop and, there, you're always striving per, for perfection, but you know, everybody knows that perfection doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. So it's this constant striving for something that you can't actually achieve. Um, but what you're achieving is really awesome. And like, you should, you should enjoy that. So it's, it's oftentimes, you know, we'll get so caught up with how we want things to be that we're not appreciating what we've actually achieved. So that, that can be a downfall of our perfectionism, but it's also, you know, that's why we've gotten there. And that's why we're so good is because we're always, you know, asking our, ourselves for more. So it's just a balance. It's just, you know, pushing yourself and being hard on yourself when you need to be, and then like giving yourself a break too. Yeah, you're so. right. Cause I mean, in order to achieve great things, like there is a sense of high standards, excellence, like delivering. It's not like, uh, it's okay. It's good enough. Like, no coach isn't going to let you be. It's good enough. Like, right. this is what we need. You're, you're not like, it's, if you're a singer, if you're, you know, I think a lot of times people in the physical arts. So even like models or actors or all this stuff, there's this image and this weird in the entertainment industry, this kind of almost weird cloud of, of like, you have to be perfect if you want to be this, because there's a whole bunch of other people that are going to take, that want your job. And like, so there's almost this form of like undertow of manipulation to say, you better stay perfect <laughs> or else we're right. going to get someone else. Do you ever experience that too in, in this, in the world of 
entertainment? Like in terms of body image and things like that? I mean, just kind of like, I sometimes just feel like this undertow that we're just required to be perfect. But you actually, yeah. in, in one sense, are because it's your job. Right. Like you're a professional. You have to deliver at like excellent levels like every time. Like you can't right. just be Oh, oh, you know what I mean? It's like, yeah, no, no, I, I, I get what you're saying. And it's true. And I think the, like the secret to all this thing is like, well, what is perfect? Perfect is, is me at, at my like best performance level. And like when people see me at my best, they're, they're going to see the perfection that can be achieved that they didn't know mm -hmm. existed. Like, it's just, I feel like perfect is, is it, it's not real, but there's, there's each person has their, their shade of perfect. And it's, it's all, it's so many different things put together and maybe it's imperfections like involving themselves in it too. Like, you know, every, every dancer has their own personality when they dance and that's, you know, filled with imperfections that come out as, you know, I don't know, maybe like a softness or a hardness or whatever, just a personality. Um, That's what makes people special. I mean, those, those little, yeah. those, those extra pieces. Yeah. So, um, hmm. and, and, and yeah, sometimes it's like this, you know, you're so focused on being perfect that you're actually diminish, diminishing what makes you super, super interesting. So hmm. I, I always try and, you know, not focus so much on, the perfection, but like just the high, the highest level that I can get. So it's so that it's alive and it's real versus like this, like stamped, you know, already pre-qualified perfection. Yeah. Good that's point. not real. So, yeah, uh, that's, that makes total sense. You know, and the other thing I'm hearing is that I think a lot of people give trying to like trying to achieve excellence. They try to say, just nobody's perfect. So it's like they're not actually going to try to strive for it. So there's a very few people that actually strive for perfection. But when you strive for perfection, you do hit excellence a lot. Right. You know, yeah, that's, it, as long like, as we can keep our mind to where we're not we're not mean to ourselves if we don't if we're not perfect. You know, we have to right. be nice to ourselves if we're not you know what I mean, too? <laughs> yeah, and it, yeah, that is something that, that does get lost sometimes. And, um, you know, I, I've seen so many um, friends and colleagues, like, growing up who, who, you know, would get super, super down on themselves or, like, really stuck in the body image thing with ballet. And, like, it, it's something that can, like, it can totally ruin it for you. Like, it, they just end up, quitting and like quitting something that they worked really hard for and loved so much, but it's just like, you know, the negativity of, of it got to them and, and they don't, you know, they had to stop pursuing it. So, uh, I think it's, especially if it's in your tight knit group, if someone, if people are being too critical or do you, how is your like community of the people you dance with? Are people really up lifting and helping each other out? Is it that kind of an environment? The environment I'm in now is very uplifting. Like we're just, um, we're such a small group that we really need each other. Mm, um, you know, there's really not any competition, like no evil competition for That's sure. Awesome. You know, That's because nice. yeah, it's cause we're a fan, like we're a family because we're, we're 10 or 11 people and we travel together. Mm. We, you know, support each other and, and, um, you know, I've got some great bosses and they really, try to cultivate like a supportive environment. Awesome. Um, but you know, in general, the ballet environment can be pretty vicious, especially yeah, like, brutal. you know, gr yeah. brutal, like growing up, um, you know, you're, you are competing with constantly with your colleagues because, um, you know, to get a job in this industry is very difficult. Um, yeah. so, and you're basically, when you're hired into a dance company, usually it's like on a, um, a contract for a year basis, mm. usually unless yeah. you're a freelance dancer and then you just do projects. But, um, but yeah, so it's like every year you're reevaluated and it's like, you know, I remember in other companies I was in, like 
dancers would get fired for ridiculous things. Like, you know, oh, you got injured this year and like, we don't know if you can handle next season. So we're going to let you go. Or like you put on too much weight or, you know, you, it's just like, just the, and these are, these are individuals who like just are so hardworking and talented and special and like would just be so much more appreciated in like any other industry you would think, mm. but like just ballet dynamics sometimes, sometimes and in specific places can be so hardcore yeah. that, that the competition is just like insane. <laughs> this is why one of the big lessons in life in the entertainment industry is not letting anybody else tell you who you are learning that. Lesson. Yeah. Oh yeah. Because yeah, I mean, if you have that, if you have a strong sense of who you are and, like, what you're capable of, like, that's going to show. And people will try, especially, like, manipulative, like, you know, people who like to make other people feel bad about themselves. They're going to they're gonna look for the weakness of, of people who are not self-assured and who are seeking approval. And if, if you're someone who's truly confident, like they're not going to be able to get to you. Right. And so they'll leave you alone. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, exactly. Right. When you stand up to the bully, the bully doesn't want to mess with you anymore. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) So, so what are a few, um, I don't know, maybe inspirational mentors or books that maybe, uh, I don't know. They don't I guess they don't have to be about dancing. Just uh, like some of the, in general, some of your favorite either mentors or, or books or things to mm. learn about? Let's see. I mean, I looked up to a lot of the, cause I grew up in San Francisco, um, training at the San Francisco ballet school. So I looked up to a wow, lot. Wow. That's the, a huge school, right? Yeah. It's huge. It's, it's massive. How cool. Um, yeah, it was cool. It was great. Um, and I got to see since the company is attached to the school, I, you know, was, early on exposed to one of the best companies, you know, in the world. So I was watching, you know, principal dancers at the very top level. And there are a few, um, a few of those principals I I really looked up to. And, um, uh, you know, I don't know if names will, will ring a bell for anybody, but, um, like Sarah Van Patten had this like, uh, very, very ethereal, very, um, enticing quality to her dancing. Like she always used her eyes so much when she danced. So that was one thing that like, I always try to do. I always try and like be really expressive with my eyes and just use my focus for, for things. And Mm. it kind of creates this like magic sometimes if it's done right. If it's, you know, yeah, I could see that. And, uh, yeah, and another dancer, uh, Maria Kachakova, this like little Russian girl. She um, she just had this amazing work ethic. Like she trained at the Bolshoi, and um, she would always work at the studios late. And um, I was a total bunhead growing up, so I would you know spend extra hours in the studio as well. And like one day she saw me, and she just like. She was like, do you want to train together? Like I can, I can, you know, we can do variations. I can help you. And I was about 17 and she was, you know, principal dancer in the company and was like willing to work with me just like, because she liked doing it. Like didn't even ask for money. It was, it was pretty awesome. Wow. So there, you know, a couple, a couple of those people really, really inspired me, um, yeah, you had and, a couple you know, pretty awesome like moments and that you were able to fully learn from. Yeah. Yeah, and I mean I had in one I had one ballet teacher, uh, Miss Pascal, Pascal Leroy, um, and she she was just like this beautiful regal woman from France and she was she was a, she was really strict, but like a total sweetheart at the same time. Like she was so strict in the studio, but like she was the nicest person outside the studio. And uh, I remember I got a really bad knee injury when I was, you know, looking for jobs. Actually, I was like 17 and it was like the crucial year for me to be getting my jobs. And I, I wasn't sure if I could if I could do it because I was injured. And she just like really took the time to 
to like help me and to like, you know, wow. help me mentally a lot and, um, help me get back, get back and get strong. So the mental game is the one you get to work on when you get injured. Yeah. That is like really difficult because it's just, it's like your wings are taken away. You're just like, you feel powerless and, um, you don't know, you know, what's going to happen. You don't know if you're ever going to get better or, you know, get to the same level. And, um, it's, it takes a lot of, of discipline to get back from, from a bad injury. So, Mm. and patience, patience is necessary for that. Have you had a couple, uh, how, how many injuries have you had? And while dancing. I've actually knock on wood, but like I've been pretty healthy throughout my whole career. Awesome. When I when I was like seventeen, I, I had like um, a pretty bad knee injury, but it was like nothing had happened. Like I hadn't fallen or or had any impact. I think I, my body was just growing, and mm. like my knees are, you know, I I have long limbs and long legs, and like my kneecaps were like very long and. And they, um, they just like weren't sitting in the grooves right. And so I had to build the muscles around my kneecaps to like, to mm. hold my kneecaps in place basically. Wow. So I did learn a lot about, about my body and, and my structure and, and muscles and tendons through, through that. Um, so yeah, you're very so, yeah. connected to your body. I would imagine as a dancer, especially ballet. And I think a lot of people, we over time lose touch with our bodies because we do fall into these like monotonous rhythms. But as a dancer, Mm -hmm. like you can't lose touch with your body. Yeah. And that's why I can tell so, so drastically, like when I'm more sedentary and, you know, especially through this, you know, Mm. quarantine time, it's like definitely you can't avoid it. Like you're sitting more, um, and it, it is like, I can, I can feel the change in my body. And so when I, when I start to feel it, I know that that's when it's time to like notch up the training and, you know, you know, do more, more intense work throughout the day. Um, because yeah, I mean, it's just, it's just like, it's like losing your vision or like your sense of smell or your touch. Like, it's just so, it's so important. And when, when it's not there, you just feel like you're, you're not, something's wrong. <laughs> yeah. I mean, what, what, what are they saying right now? A lot of science is saying that the sedentary lifestyle is going to be is worse than smoking. Just like sitting yeah, there not I doing be- anything. I believe that. I mean, we used to do much more manual labor, you know, uh, and everything is, you know, on a, done on a computer now, which is great. Like, it's great that technology is, has advanced that far, but yeah. it's not good for us physically that we're sitting in a you know, chair all day long. So Yeah, we've isolated everything we do into little pockets instead of, l- like, walking for our job while we're working, you know, working and yeah. walking or moving and working. It's like, or get it walking to the place. Cause I, I, we were talking, it's like, there's literally like no there's, reason for anybody to walk anywhere ever again. If you didn't want to, <laughs> it's true. It's like, yeah, it's, it's so true. It's like you get in your car and you drive to your office, then you sit in your chair and then you, you know, <laughs> yeah. you call Uber Eats to come deliver your lunch and like. <laughs> then you get back in your car, you could avoid walking for days at a time. It was, <laughs> no, it was like I'm funny on like there was, I don't forget who was a comedian or something, but he was, he parked on one side of the street in LA and he gets in his car and then he, he drives around like, like that to the other bar on the other side of the street and gets Oh out. my God. It's like, it's but, ridiculous. Yeah. Um, so what are, do you have, what are some of your goals? Like, what are some of the things that you want? You've achieved so much already. I mean, what are you looking forward to over the next few years? That's a good question. Um, yeah, it's true. It's like, I mean, our careers are, you know, it, it takes so much to, to develop it and it's a full, full lifestyle investment. Um, but they are short careers, you know, I'm, I'm 30. Um, so I, you know, people don't usually dance past late thirties, mm. you know, sometimes 40 that's pushing it. Don't know if I want to be that person who's dancing when they're 40. Um, 
So there is like a transition period where you start to think, you know, well, what's going to come next, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, and I feel like I'm, I'm lucky in the sense that I, I have left classical dance and I've come back to it and been able to do that. So I, you know, I'm aware there are other worlds out there. Um, you know, after the I did that dirty dancing tour, I moved to New York and did a bunch of freelancing. Um, I did some TV and some theater plays and, and stuff like that. Um, and so I was kind of, you know, I was aware that there were other directions within the arts that that I could go. Definitely. Um, I mean, you've already done a lot. You have on your resume, you have a lot of acting and like play experience. So, I mean, that doesn't have to stop. I mean, of course, right. the professional side of everything is the is the just never stop inside. That's the side. Like right. doing all this up professionally, like <laughs> trying to be have it be the career. Um, yeah. So, but you you know you can do that for a lot longer in the play scene because there's characters that are needed, you know, from exactly. every age range. Exactly. Um, it is hard though because that is you know also a very um, hard thing to pursue, and you're often like living that gypsy life. And yeah, right. You know, I don't know if I want to do that forever. You know, yeah. I. You know, there's, you know, definitely a uh, desire to, you know, have a family and, you know, kind of have like a somewhat normal, like secure life. And yeah. oftentimes it's like when you're an artist, you're just constantly, you know, y you don't know where your next paycheck's coming from sometimes. And, you know, you're you're just kind of auditioning all the time and, you know, looking for new projects and, and that's fun and stimulating. But at the same time, it's like, it's not always sustainable. Yeah. So, you know, to develop, you know, some kind of company or some kind of school where there's like, you know, more, more of an income stream, a consistent income stream would be cool. Oh um, yeah. That's a great idea. Yeah, so I'm I'm thinking about it and like, you know, kind of Larry, I took a couple entrepreneurial uh courses during quarantine. So I'm kinda nice. like slowly, secretly building some sort of plan, but I don't even really know what it is yet. So sometimes it's totally okay. You know, and that, and that's the other thing is sometimes I have a tendency to live too far in the future, set my my future goals so much and really focus on those that I, I, I re need to remember to come back here to the present. Cause I heard a quote is like, if we living in the past all the time, we might be experiencing depression. If we're living too far in the future, we might be experiencing anxiety. And mm -hmm. so I, I, that's why I, and I think anxiety was more of my, my experience when I, <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to be so productive and I kind of valued my life on productivity and yeah. then so on those moments when I re had needed to relax, my body actually needed to shut down for a second. I felt like I wasn't doing anything and it was only like a day or two. And then I was hard on myself. So I kind of found myself in this little cycle that I think maybe yeah. entrepreneurs and artists, especially when we're like hustling for the next job. I mean, the, the next paycheck, it, like the freelance life is um, what I was living for so long. And, uh -huh. and it's, it is fun. I mean, that's the cool part about it. There's like, it's, it's exciting and it's a lot of fun, but I really like, yeah, I really felt the need to put down some roots somewhere. Cause it was mm -hmm. weird when I was in, when I was making movies, like I was so transient. I had apartments. I was just bouncing from apartment to apartment. It didn't really matter. I was where I was going. I liked to travel so much, but mm -hmm. then when I decided to buy a house, it changed the whole game. I'm like, well, it was so weird. I was like, so scared to like put some roots down, but it was cheaper than rent mm -hmm. my loan. So I'm like, yeah. why not? <laughs> You're like, so, why not? Yeah. And so it's been the best thing for me that, though, because it, it grounded me and it gave sure. me, and now I, I have a food forest around my house. I have animals in the backyard. I got ducks and just, it's just, it's a fun yeah, place for me to be. <laughs> I but, think that's so important. Like for yeah. us to have a place where we can actually call home to, you know, regardless of how our lifestyle is like, you know, I, you know, I, on my tour, I lived out of a suitcase for two years, but I had my, my parents still live in San Francisco. So that was like my home. Like I would go back there when I had a break. 
Um, so, so it was, it, I feel like it's very important to have a home base, to have a place. Yeah. Have a home. Yeah. And then as you get older, um, it's like, I didn't want that place to be my mom's place anymore. So it was a necessary right, thing yeah, for, yeah. for me to get my own, but to have your own, but I don't need it to be much. It's, it's, I don't need much. I just, I needed a little piece of dirt just to, uh, ground myself and, and remind myself that I could handle it. I could handle anything. And the things that I'm afraid yeah. of sometimes are the things I need to almost lean into. Uh, right. Oh, that's sometimes. very often the case. It's very often the case. And it's, yeah, it's hard to like put roots down like that. Cause you know, responsibility is, it, is coming with that. And it's, but you know, you figure it out and you, you figure it out. When we add responsibility onto our plate, we always figure it out. You're right. We always figure it out. No, who's like ready to have a kid? Like I know all these yeah. people, it's like whenever ever people have kids, you know, everybody says this, whoever's had their first kid, they're like, we were not ready. You're like nobody's ever ready. Like parents aren't ready. Right. Like, we, we just got to like lean into those things and, um, and just know, I don't know. I'm, I lean into the unknown pretty well, uh-huh. but that's just how I live. That's how I've trained myself to live. Um, it, it's, I just think a lot of times fear and excitement are extremely similar physical reactions. And sometimes totally. we might actually think we're afraid when, when, when we might be excited. Right. I mean, I could like people, my boyfriend could vouch for me and say like, I'm afraid of everything, but like also like really, really attracted to it. Like, I'm like, I don't want to do, you know, I don't want to like go on that, that bike trail. It's like windy and scary and like. I'm scared and I'm going to fall off my bike and hurt myself. But I'm also like really intrigued and really want to go on it. You know, it's just like, yeah, I, you'd be bummed think, if he was like, okay, I'm going alone. Exactly. But, um, yeah. And I mean, another thing. Okay. So I, this may sound so ridiculous cause I'm 30, but I like recently just got my driver's license for the first time because I mean, I, you know, lived in big cities my whole life and, uh, toured. So I never had to drive. Wow. And like, I was super scared to get my driver's license because I was just like, so unfamiliar with the act of, of controlling a, a vehicle. And, um, but I, you know, I was also like, this is like, I really want to learn how to drive. And, you know, I think it's pretty necessary skill to have. Yeah. Um, especially in Arizona. so I was, yeah. And <laughs> that's when I, <laughs> Yeah. Being here, I was like, okay, it needs to happen right now. I can't even go to CVS. <laughs> There's so, no public uh, transportation here. <laughs> no. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, I was like really intent on doing it. I just, you know, that was one of the things I did during quarantine is just go get my driver's license. Wow. Just now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How cool. Yeah. So are you driving so, now? I, I will, I need to get like an actual car of my own now. I, I'm going to like rent one or, or, you know, I'm looking, I've been researching a lot on that recently, actually, well, to try and figure exciting. out what I want. Your first yeah. car. I know my first <laughs> car. Oh my gosh. I feel like How I was cool. 16 again. I know. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah. I don't think people in Arizona understand what you're just talking about. They're like, wait, yeah. how, how did that happen? Cause yeah, we, we, I mean, it's just so spread out here. I've been driving yeah, since I was 13. 13. Wow. Yeah. So illegal. Yeah, totally, totally. illegal. Totally. Totally <laughs> illegal. Living, I was living in the boonies, though. We had to haul our water. So we you're driving a, like, have water. tractor around? Well, no, it was an Aerostar. <laughs> it was a 1989 Ford Aerostar with a hitch on it, and it was a stick oh, okay. shift. So I learned how to drive a stick shift when I was 13, and I drove that stick shift, and we had to haul water. There was a 500-gallon tank behind the van. I'd take it to the well, fill it up, take it home, and put it in the ground. And then we oh, had wow. four of those trips and we had all the well, the, the water in the tank filled up. So we had water at the house, 2000 gallons. Wow. Yeah. I was a redneck, but the, <laughs> the funny thing about fear was I learned how to drive on a stick shift. And then it, it was, it was, I was turning 16 and I had to get rid of the van and I had to get some other vehicle that was an automatic. And I was and you were afraid like, to drive I, the automatics. I had never done it yeah. before. <laughs> And someone's like, yeah, no, you just pretty much put it in gear and hit the gas. It's like, yeah, you, you learn on a stick shift. It's like ballet. You're learning on a stick shift and then you get to drive an automatic, which is more like maybe salsa. <laughs> it's yeah. as far as dance is concerned, but 
Right. Um, it's it's that's funny. Yeah, it's just unfamiliarity is is uh-huh. always like comes along with a little like fear. But some I feel like some people are more attracted to to fear than others for sure. Well, that's true. But I also find growth. There's positive ways and negative ways to be attracted to fear. I think. But Mm -hmm. then uh, growth is something I've been really thinking about. And I think that's the thing about growth. The initial inherent nature of growth is that it is uncomfortable. And if we're always trying to seek comfortable, it's it's opposite of growth. (laughs) Right. So growth, we got to kind of like push ourselves on the edge of uncomfortable. Totally. Um, But. Yep, that's how I live. It sounds, and I, I'm just enamored by your professional dancer. That is amazing. Like you've you've just accomplished some incredible things. I mean, it's. I don't think people may un, maybe people understand, but it's a very small number of people in the world are like professional dancers. Like get paid to do it. Yeah, it, it's true. It's. I mean, we're like the NFL, but we don't get paid millions of dollars. I know. Why is that? <laughs> it's because we don't have dance stadiums. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we got to do some dance team. Well, you know what? They've been trying that, that that's, they, they do that dance teams and like competitions. Well, and yeah, I just feel like it's not as um, like sports is just so embedded in like our culture and yeah, dance we could is, do, is like, more, dance boxing like people could beat the crap out of each other yeah, and be dancing like, do you still dance i yeah that's just <laughs> totally integrated why do why do we all like this we, we like the sports where people get injured where people like hit yeah. each other and then i and, think it's just more um like it's you know goes back to those gladiator days of just like you know wanting to to be in, involved in this like spectator thing yeah which i feel like you could turn and dance into but it's just not as you know well you have, they have it at the olympics but, you know they have yeah. dancing at the olympics so i mean it's a definitely one of those like there's ways to compete but there really isn't like dancers sponsored for 20 million dollars a year right i don't know that's actually a thing that. <laughs> unless you're That'd dancing cool. with the stars and you're already making 20 million a year no, right just, <laughs> right i mean there's definitely like there are ways to make money in the industry for sure. Well, <laughs> give what, what, what kind of advice would you give some people if they are bored right now about like how can da- maybe they could start dancing on their own? Like if they wanted to start dancing as a workout, I mean, they're probably not going to become professional. Just sorry, guys. Yeah. But I mean, like, that's, <laughs> getting that's in shape totally or feeling you can, good. You can, you can get so many benefits from dance, like whatever level you're at. Um, I, I would say, you know, right now there's a lot of options online. So, um, just going online and seeing what kind of, sometimes you can just like enter a dance, a virtual dance class for free and, you know, check it and see how comfortable you are with what level is being, is being offered. But, um, you know, you can, you can get a lot of information online these days, even, you know, YouTube is great. Like people are posting dance routines on YouTube and, you know, everyone's really into TikTok right now. I've actually never tried it. I have no idea how it works, but I know that's like a fun, like social media way to like do a little dance and like post it. Yeah. So that's awesome. Um, So also, you know, yeah, just like working, you know, there's a lot of dance workouts that are, that are out there as well, you know, kind of like it's a, it's an integration of, of, you know, core and toning totally. but like to fun music and you're moving around and you're kind of like you're enjoying the movement while working out um yeah do you, so like do you have dance cl- do you have some uh, where can people find you and like are, are, are if they wanted to take dance classes from you virtually right now or is that, are you doing that for them yeah i i have a, i mean i have a website it's www.jenny j-e-n-n-y dash winton w-i-n-t-o-n dot com and um i offer virtual one-on-ones um cool. in any of the styles like classical ballet contemporary um and theater and then i also you know do virtual pilates classes i teach on several different instagram platforms and then off of my own platform so um awesome if anybody wants to you know seek me out um that would probably be the best way to do so 
um, on that website. So go to your website and then yeah, they can find your other socials from 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 the website. Yeah, I mean, yeah, sure. And then my Instagram handle is um, my name Jenny Winton eighty nine. Um, so it's pretty similar to the website, and you can message me there as well. Um, but I would be thrilled to just like, you know, I, I love teaching people and like it's whenever I get a new student, it's just like it's so fun to to introduce them to to dance and to movement and to discovering how more about their body and like making themselves feel good about their body and their skills and their connection with themselves. So uh, that's what I'm here for. <laughs> awesome. You have one piece of advice you'd give to anybody uh, that's that's struggling right now. What would you What would you tell them to struggling encourage them? Right now. Uh, one piece of advi- advice. Uh, I mean, I would I would say like, really do do live for the day that you're that you're in at the moment. And um, there's always something to do. There's always a new skill to learn. There's always a new book to read. There's always a new dance to dance and there's there's always something to do with your time and no matter what situation you're in financially or mentally or whatever there's there's always there's always a way out of a bad situation mm. so thank you that's amazing perfect way to end this yes thank, thank you, you so, so much, much Dave. This yeah is awesome i'm it, really glad that we did this i am too <laughs> Thank you for joining us for the Healthy and Family Show. Visit our website at healthyandfamily.com. That's healthyandfamily.com to see what all the other doctors, experts, and real moms have to say about keeping your whole family healthy. This episode has been brought to you by CompleteNutro.com, Whole Family Nutrition, and aired on the Goldstone Network. People, planet, future.